we're looking at oh, about 500 kilometers of back arc ridge. And we have no idea where there might be venting. We're here to find sites of interest for the cruise next year with the ability to take samples and good detailed images of the seafloor pictures. Um, and we need to give them targets. Towing our sensors behind the ship, moving the CTD package up and down through the water column, through about 400 meters of the water above bottom. And this sort of paints us a two-dimensional picture of where there are hydrothermal chemicals in the water column and what the concentration of those chemicals are. And that's what gives us the clue to where the hot water is coming on. Today was an exciting day. It's the first time we've really seen a big hydrothermal plume. Pretty much we saw continuous plumes the whole tow, and we weren't out of them at the end. We found two good targets, new targets that have never been seen before. Really amazing and really interesting signals. Early part of the tow, plumes were very close to the seafloor, a lot of chemical signals, but not many particle signals, so probably low temperature vents. Those chemicals only last in the water for a kilometer or two. Then they are um, oxidized and we can't detect them anymore. So if we see signals in there, that means we're very close. And then about halfway through, it totally switched the other way. The chemical signals were much smaller. The particle signals were suddenly really big. The plumes were a lot higher, so th those are probably from higher temperature vents. Really interesting part of the back arc and uh, just whopping signals. We can pinpoint where on the ridge within a few kilometers you're likely to find hydrothermal venting. So we can send Sentry down to do fine scale maps, get a better picture of where the venting is. When Sentry came back on board and we looked at the pictures that it took during the photo survey, our jaw just dropped because there was this brand new lava flow sitting there on the seafloor. Black areas are the new lava and it's, it's black because it's covered with a glass and has very little sediment on it. It's flowing over this older seafloor that's lighter colored because all the sediment has accumulated on it. Eruptions happen, but they're probably uh, few and far between. Like hundreds of years apart. So we just got lucky and happened to be here right after one of these eruptions happened. And we're probably seeing some of the plumes are from this recent eruption. We have been lucky enough to have some old data that was collected here a couple of years ago on the research vessel Melville. And we've been able to compare that to data that we collected on the Falcor. This is where math comes in. It's those differences that show us where the lava flows occurred. And some of those areas we see data that's uh, over 120 meters deep, the, these pillow lava flows. So that's pretty amazing when you think of it. It's, it's a 40-story building that we're looking at. How do I feel about this plume? Oh, I'm very disappointed about this plume because it knocked me off of my throne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I previously held the cruise record. So we have this bedding pool going on. I was the only one who picked this segment, so <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> We're here to find the big plumes, and so I actually feel pretty good about this plume. You know, the first few days of the cruise, we were doing tows and not finding much. You can't help but start thinking, what if it's like this every day? <laughs> you know, what if we don't find anything? But then now, today, it's like, wow, this is great. <laughs> I mean, so it just makes me wonder what's, what we're gonna find tomorrow.